So now that the weather is starting to turn cool, I think it is a great opportunity for a warm dessert. There's just something so delicious about tucking into something that's warm and ooey gooey with a little bit of ice cream that I just think is perfect for this time of year. And when you see how easy it is to put together, this is gonna be your next dinner party dessert. It is that simple. So to begin, you're gonna need anywhere from six to eight croissants. So usually in the grocery store, you can get those big like family packs. That usually works out great. It doesn't have to be like gourmet croissants. This can be like from your local grocery store because we're gonna dry them out and pull them apart. So it really doesn't matter. So I like to bake this dessert in a nonstick 12 inch skillet. I just think it looks really great when you bring it oven to table, but you also could do this in a large casserole dish. Now I think it's better to actually dry these croissants out in the oven so that they become really crispy. That way they won't get all mushy when they get with the custard. You just wanna rip them like this, these sort of like bite-sized pizzas, and put them in the vessel and see how far you get. All right, so this is probably gonna end up being seven croissants, which I think is probably a good amount for something like this. It's a 12 inch skillet, but it's probably a good two inches deep. It's kind of like fill it up so it looks like plentiful because when we put the custard on top, it's gonna flatten out. And when all of that custard gets soaked into the croissants, it's also gonna flatten out. So I think you wanna be overly generous as opposed to a little stingy. So once we know that our croissants are gonna fit in here, you're just going to pop them on a sheet pan as much as you can, single layer. Then this is gonna go in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about five to eight minutes. You just wanna make sure that they're drying out a little bit and nice and crispy and they'll be very fragrant. All right, now we are gonna create the custard for our bread pudding. So for that, you're gonna use six eggs. Then to our eggs, we're going to add two cups of whole milk and then two cups of heavy cream. <laughs> this is what makes it so decadent and delicious. I'd be afraid if you used all milk, you wouldn't get the structure as you would with the heavy cream. And then just whip this up just until all of those egg yolks are combined. To flavor your custard, you're going to add two thirds cup of white sugar, just to sweeten it up a bit. For a little flavor, I like to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Then I'm gonna add the zest of one orange. The orange really adds a beautiful flavor and I think it makes it a little bit less decadent. Bread pudding can be really rich and if you don't have some kind of refreshing flavor or something to kind of wake it up, um, it can just be too heavy. So sometimes you could add a little bit of alcohol, <laughs> a little bourbon or some rum would be good. Okay, so this is all flavored and ready to go. So you can set this aside. Okay, our croissants are done. They are looking all nice and toasty. So I am just going to set these aside while I get to work on the raisins. I really love the combination of raisins in bread pudding. But if you don't wanna use raisins, you could use chocolate chips. That would be really good, especially with the orange. And that would be equally delicious too. So raisins by their very nature are dried fruit and they can get a little shrivelly. So I like to just soak them first in the orange juice. Not only does that allow them to kind of plump up and just have a better texture, but it also gives them a ton of flavor. You wanna just give your raisins a stir and just let them hang out. All right, so I've greased my pan with about a tablespoon of butter. Then we are going to add our nice, fabulous, crispy croissants. Can you hear that? Nice and crunchy. Now for the raisins, you do wanna drain them. You don't wanna take all these raisins and put it in the custard with all of that orange juice. Otherwise, it'll dilute your custard and make your bread pudding a little runny. So you could save the juice if you would like for a smoothie in the morning. Um, or just drink it on the spot. <laughs> okay, then to distribute the custard, I do like to use a ladle, just so that when we have a very full bowl here, it doesn't go all over the place. One of the reasons why I really love this recipe for entertaining is because you can get this whole part done in advance, and then we are going to stick this in the fridge for I would say a minimum of three hours. Four hours would be even better, because what that will do is create kind of like a delicious custardy texture to the croissants. Then when it comes time to bake, you're going to place it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for just about 45 to 50 minutes. You wanna make sure that the top is nice and crispy and golden brown and that you don't have any more egg custard that looks uncooked. And if that is happening, you can cover the whole thing with some clean aluminum foil just for another five minutes or so, just to make sure that it's completely baked throughout. Now another thing you can get done ahead of time or even the day before is the caramel sauce. So in this pot, I'm gonna add one cup of white sugar, 
And then you are just gonna turn this on and let it sit here until it starts to melt. This is where the patience comes in. And resist the temptation to go in there and start to stir it. Just let it melt on its own. So you can see the amber color. It's starting to melt around the sides. It's even starting to smoke. You wanna turn that down a little bit and just kind of swirl the pan as you go. Just even rise up the pan like that. So if you can't lower it, it needs to be even like less heat, just pick it up. It'll sort of look like an iceberg melting. <laughs> and then once it looks like that, then you could go in with a non-stick wire whisk and give it a little help. At this stage, you can turn the heat off, okay, because we don't want to burn or caramelize any more this sugar. It's actually perfect, um, but we do want to add a few things to it. At least, I would say, two tablespoons of butter, and then, we're going to add some heavy cream. Two tablespoons, maybe three. All right, then this is looking pretty good as far as the consistency. Now, we just wanna add a little bit of vanilla extract. So maybe a half a teaspoon. And of course, <laughs> a little bit of fleur de sel, a good pinch. Now, if I am serving this within the next few hours, I would just leave it in this pot. I would allow it to cool down, pop a sheet of foil on it, and place it in the fridge. And that way, all I have to do is put it back on the stove top and heat it up to serve. I just wanna leave it in the pan for longer than a few hours because you don't want it to develop a kind of metallic taste. And then when it comes out of the oven, you can serve it oven to table. I like to dust it with a little bit of powdered sugar. And this is a very casual dessert that you can really just spoon out. You don't need to worry about it being perfect little squares. Top with some vanilla ice cream and a drizzle of that caramel sauce. And I'm telling you, you will have one fantastic cold weather dessert. And if you'd like to be the first to know when my videos post, subscribe to my newsletter. The link is below and that way you'll never miss a video. All right, you guys, I'll see you back here next time. Until then, bye.